All right. Um, I'd like to introduce my next speaker, uh, Mordo. Can yes? Can you share your video first? Hey. <laughs> How are we? How are we doing? So far, so good, I guess. We have, I mean, according to my dashboard, it's about 300 people on the Meet Magento in the whole, but I don't know how much on oh, this right. session particularly. But Excellent. yeah, we're probably going to get the statistic later once we end the session. We can, every session, we will have more better stats. But hey, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Where, where are you based, by the way, Murdo? Are you based in Singapore, Australia? So we're, I'm based in Australia and we've got uh, obviously presence in Southeast Asia, um, across Singapore, etc. But we've got two offices in Australia, in Sydney and in Melbourne. Yeah. So, uh, got yeah. it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And I'm missing my travel. Uh, obviously with the current situation, we travel a lot around Southeast Asia I and mean, we would usually be there, but unfortunately, yes, things, things have happened. <laughs> yeah. It's not, it's not total lockdown for now. Uh, all right, I'm not going to hold uh, your session more. Uh, I'll just let you take the stage and go ahead and introduce yourself, Murder. Thank you very much, Gladi. Okay, so thank you very much for all joining. My name is Murdo Wallace. I, I am the Director of Operations for Dot Digital in the Asia Pacific region. And I've been around for about 20 years in the tech industry uh, and around 12 years in the marketing technology space. Um, I travel extensively around, or I did travel extensively around Southeast Asia, um, and we've got presence all over the globe. Um, Dot Digital itself, uh, you may have heard of us. Uh, we're actually part of the core code. Uh, in Magento. So as of Magento 2.2.2 and above, uh, our integration is part of the core code. Um, and there's been hundreds and hundreds of hours of testing to make sure uh, the data just syncs automatically and it instantly enables uh, merchants to, to start ramping up their marketing automation. Uh, and that runs from communication, to product recommendations and all of the AI details associated with that. So what am I gonna talk about in the next 20, 25 minutes? Um, I, I love the idea around making sure merchants are ready for peak events, okay? Maximizing their peak events. So for the next 20, 25 minutes, I'm gonna talk about the realistic, actionable elements um, that you can you can use and implement on your e-commerce sites on your magento sites um, instantly uh, as i mentioned dot digital we're actually part of the core code you can enable us immediately um, live chat for example magento live chat is is our own live chat so to set the agenda i want to talk about a little bit about the peak dates uh, everybody knows a lot of them they're regionally based everybody's peak dates are different but there are certain elements that are growing in regions specifically in indonesia and also globally i'm going to talk about the preparation before key events what you should be doing from a messaging point of view from a site preparation point of view um, and these are easy attainable things during events, communication and automation is key. Everyone knows that. It's how you can enable and what you should be looking at, not so much maybe the content, but operationally, the elements inside there. And then post-event, riding, I, I call it ride the peak wave longer. How do you keep engagement going past those peaks and troughs, etc.? You want to keep the peak up and not hit that trough. Um, so just to set the scene from a stats point of view, obviously stats you need, especially in this day and age, this year specifically, stats can be a little bit misrepresentative of the current situation. However, this is, this is a classic one um, that, that isn't really widely uh, shared, but as, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but essentially 90% of the, the country's users, internet users in Indonesia, um, are reported, have reported that they've already bought products and services. Now, what they are, it doesn't matter. What we've got is a large group of digital savvy users uh, that are looking to purchase. And, and this is a key stat for me, more than 18 billion US dollars. Now, 
any guesses. Um, for me, this is a huge value. Last year in Singles Day, for example, but not the whole Singles Day, first two hours. So the reason why I show you this is the first hour, I think it's around about one to two billion US. The first two hours, 18 billion. So for example, if your communication, if your automations, if, if all of your elements of communication are not up to scratch and optimize, you could miss out on a large portion of that, in this example, singles day um, revenue. Now, for me, I'm not going to run through the peak dates. These are just some of the highlights globally. Some are regional, some are not. But for me, globally, we are seeing, obviously, Singles Day now is a global event. Cyber Monday, Black Friday, again, is now a global event. It was a U.S. phenomenon. Now it's, it's reaching all the, the small-scale regional uh, areas now. And also things like Christmas, New Year sales, and, and Chinese New Year, etc. Um, but from a preparation point of view, for these key dates, the most common question that we certainly get, uh, and I get, is what can I do to prepare myself? What can I do to prepare my site? What can I do to prepare my communication? There's a lot of questions. And people talk a lot about preparation. However, to be honest, it's the least actioned area of key events. Now, what you need to do, you need to make sure you do simple steps in preparation um, and not be consumed with content creation, slick designs, how a button is at the top right instead of the bottom left, how text is positioned, a color of a button, for example. These are important. However, from a messaging point of view, if your message is never shared, never viewed, never opened by your consumers, what's the point? It's like buying a Ferrari and not filling it with petrol or putting oil in it. You're never gonna get it out of the driveway. You're never gonna drive it to, to get the benefit. So make sure you get the operational elements right. Don't chase the silver bullet. We find the purchase of it technology right before, before key events uh, is quite high. And the, the, the downing of that technology after the event is quite high also. Make sure you choose strategically and not just the next kind of shiny toy on the market. Now, for me, um, look, there's lots of channels, different channels, different regions from a marketing technology point of view. Um, but um, email itself, I would say, is still one of the, the most consumed channels uh, be whatever region you're in. Uh, and as well, this has to be key element on top of all of your other channels. I'm talking about things like WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, and so on and so forth. But email itself, very low cost, uh, very high revenue generating. But it comes with a lot of thought behind it. For example, Black Friday increased by over 40%. Gmail it stipulated around about 45, 50%, and the Microsoft domains um, are, are very similar. Now, what I mean by deliverability, a common misconception in terms of email, and this goes for telcos, SMS, and so a common misconception is deliverability is the same as delivery. Now, absolutely not true. Delivery is the fact of I am sending the email to Gmail or a Microsoft domain, for example, or an SMS, I'm sending it to the telco. Now, that's where delivery stops. Now, everybody should be able to deliver. However, deliverability is what happens to that message. Does it get blocked? Does it, if it's email, does it go into spam? Does it go into junk, for example? Remember spending all that time on imagery and beautiful um, kind of on brand? Um, it's not that relevant if they don't see it. So delivery and deliverability, two separate pieces. Now, what I'm trying to get to is that the... Other most misconception that, that is seen throughout key events is that delivery is more lenient uh, or deliverability is more lenient throughout key events. Now, I, if I could just send so many messages, they'll just open up and let me through. Nonsense. Delivery is more lenient. So telcos, email providers, mailbox providers, et cetera, they will open up their pipes. They will scale up because they know the increase. However, Deliverability is not um, changed at all. That it's still aggressive. Filtering is still aggressive as it was a month ago, two months ago. So, dependent upon the delivery, it's still, yes, it's more lenient. Deliverability, 
is key. And what you need to do is make sure deliverability is that you keep on top of that. So what, what are the kind of elements that you can prepare for? Um, and I want to try and make this educational rather than kind of just setting what maybe digital do. I want to try and make it sure that everybody's aware and, and kind of how the industry works. So it, across all channels, if you're using research, trend forecasting, be careful right this second with the fluidity of the, the consumer behavior right now, things change on a week to week basis, on a month to month basis. So if you're basing your, your marketing strategy, what communications you're using, what channels you're using, based upon forecasting that maybe was done on a survey last week, that survey was then done two weeks ago, three weeks ago, that might be pertinent to a specific area or region. But also, you're talking about the, the idea that things won't change. Um, and, and with the present nature of the globe at the moment as it is, things change massively. So just be careful when you use these stats and trends. What I would always say is control what you can control. Create an optimal environment and then that optimal environment will drive you as much as you can. You can't control what's going on around you. Uh, and if you can, let me know, because it would be a fantastic thing. <laughs> um, so, so in peak season, for me, don't try shouting the loudest. Um, it, it, for, for me, even the large-scale retailers will still shout louder, send more SMS, send more Facebook, send more WhatsApp, send more email. Um, they just turn the volume down. So that's consumers turn the volume down. The telcos, the mailbox providers, etc., will just turn the volume down. You might know, start getting blocked for example. Um, so don't try shouting. Make sure all your messaging is on brand. Um, um, as I mentioned, we, we are part of the core code of Magento. We drive a lot of transactional elements. Um, so you get to the checkout page of Magento and it says, tell me about your order via WhatsApp. Tell me about your order via Facebook Messenger. Or it might just be good old fashioned email. Um, make sure that level, of, um, that level of message is on brand. Think about this. You've sent me, you've nurtured me over abandoned browse automations, abandoned car automations over the last three or four weeks. I'm quite impressed with the engagement. Now I've purchased something for you. I get an email through uh, in my inbox to say, thanks very much, Murdo, for your order. And it's terrible. It's not on brand. You'll find a lot of transactional data is like that, transactional messaging. It's not on brand. It's very basic. The imagery is not right. Um, so, and that's a lot of feedback that we get from consumers that the aftercare of the purchase is, is woeful. And then everybody knows it's cheaper to retain than to create or find new customers. So why forget about your transactional? Now, um, out the box for, for any good marketing tech stack, uh, communication-wise, you should be listening to behaviors. Abandon cart, abandon browse, post-purchase. Um, make sure you test these before events. That sounds like an obvious one, but I guarantee if I polled 100 e-commerce managers or marketing, digital marketing managers, more than half will have never tested their key automations in the last one to two months. Um, they may not even be working. They may not be syncing because they've disabled it. The imagery may be wrong because they've uploaded the wrong imagery, et cetera. So make sure that your key automations uh, are, are, are optimal. And the inbox placement drops. So what I mean by that is that the placement of your messaging um, drops through key periods because there's so much noise. So what you have to do, you've got to have a deliverability strategy in place to make sure that active, so your engaged consumers, so those that have purchased maybe in the last 30 days, those that have engaged in your site, maybe read an SMS, maybe uh, engaged on Facebook, or maybe opened up your email that you've sent, or been on your site, visited your site, um, these need to be uh, have an active strategy. And for me, treating your actives differently from treating your inactives is huge. If people are not listening to you, um, don't ignore your, your, your loyal, your champion customers and turn away and start talking or trying to shout to the masses. Talk to your active consumers, the ones that are buying with respect and be relevant. And what I mean by that is product recommendations, simple things like that. Looking at warming up your active subscribers, grabbing the attention 
I find no matter what region I, I, I've, I'm in at that time, things like early access or pre-sale campaigns, um, be that via whatever channel that you want to use, is hugely beneficial. A really good one, it doesn't have to be ex an expensive, convoluted, developed um, solution. It might be as simple as a hidden page on your Magento site, or it could be a landing page created by, for example, Dot Digital, with a few select recommended products. And it might be a unique coupon code, for example, uh, to say, hi, Murdo, buy now, with, uh, buy now and get 20% off Cyber Monday's prices, for example. So it's tying people in before the events. Uh, as simple as it sounds, very little uh, individual um, corporate to, to small mum and dads do this. Uh, and the revenue return on this is huge. And I've got to say that this is one of the critical pieces. The, the e-commerce space, digital marketers, sometimes treat consumers as they know what they want. So I know what my customer wants. Do you really? Are you listening to what they're doing? Or are you listening to what you think they're doing? So event management uh, is key. And this is a classic example. Um, we, we, we have quite a lot of clients in the space where they'll reach out and ask individual clients before events. For example, here, the, the slide is showing you it's, it's in relevance to Christmas. Uh, do you want to know more about Christmas? For example, Black Friday might be huge for individual people. Um, Cyber Monday might not. Uh, Christmas might not just be anything that they, that they celebrate. However, Chinese New Year is a huge event. So try and ask them, do you want to know more? Do you want to see? And humanize it as well. If you see, um, I, we kind of talk about, I want to be the first to know. Uh, I'm not first. I rarely humanize the communication and people will, will gain traction with your brand. And also give the option to opt out or snooze. It's like, look, I, I just want to opt out of all communications. Don't contact me on, on Facebook Messenger. Don't contact me on, on email or SMS. Just leave me aside for now and then come back to me. So it's, a, it's really, a, it's not rocket science for, for active customers, lapsed customers. Now here, how do you engage um, a, a few of the, the topics previous to me and the speakers were talking about how to repeat revenue, etc. cetera. Uh, and how do you engage people who have just not um, talked to you in a while? So not engaged. How, how do you talk to people who've never purchased for you before? Um, and, and I think there's, there's some really bad ways of doing it, especially around key events. People will bombard you with, with communication after communication after communication. Don't send on mass. Don't spike your volumes. It will cause you issues, no matter what region, no matter what telco, no matter what mailbox provider, it will cause you issues. But before the event, try re-engaging your LAPS contacts. For example, Urban Outfitters, quite a, a, quite a really good example globally of their reach out campaign, their, their re-engagement before, I think this was a Black Friday last year possibly, that they're asking, are we breaking up? This sucks, we love you, come back. The fear of missing out. Uh, and you'll actually see, if you engage clients uh, or customers like this, the retrieval rate to engage clients is relatively high. If you actually give them the option to say, hey, I'm not going to talk to you anymore. Are you okay with that? They're like, whoa, whoa, why? What, what, what's happening? No, no, I want to talk to you. And then they re-engage. Uh, so it's a really easy way uh, to, to maximize the audience. And what I always do is, is when we're talking to clients, et cetera, we tag and remove unresponsive, excluding individuals through those peak events, through Singles Day, through, through Black Friday, et cetera, because it all depends and it is critical. You should be talking to the consumers that will make you money, that will purchase on your site. Don't waste time uh, on trying to massively engage the unengaged users out there. <clears throat> So during, communica uh, during the event, communication automation, this is kind of inherently linked to the preparation. So um, communicate through every, every touch point at every key stage. Um, for example, I mentioned Magento. We've got a very easy uh, widget that you drop on a Magento checkout page that says, tell me uh, via Facebook Messenger my order updates. 
So you add people in and we listen to all of the order updates, etc. You can map them into automations. Those automations might send a Facebook message to say, hi, Murdo, your, your product's been shipped. Keep a lookout. Um, or, hi, Murdo, your product should be there within three to five days or, or so on and so forth. It might be via WhatsApp. It might be push notification. But end of it, listen to what people are saying. Don't choose their channel for them. And focus on the operational as well as content. Um, and what I mean by that is don't spend so much time on beautifully designed emails or, or SMS or Facebook messages that, that are copyrighted to, to the nth degree. Uh, think about the operational elements. Classic case is a lot of your big corporates, um, even your smaller ones with small um, small server overheads, it will have uh, huge spikes of traffic. So they'll send out mass communication, say, right, Matt, your um, our sale is starting in three, two, one, go. Everybody jumps on the site and boom, your performance drags down and they're like, oh, do you know what? Nah, off you go. So throttle your messaging. So, and, and you, should, you should be able to do this. If you can't do this on your platforms, come speak to us, but throttle your messaging. So reduce, throttle your, your SMS, throttle any sort of channel, make sure that you spread out so you don't get that spike and suddenly you're on your phone to your agency going, help, uh, we're, we're having issues with performances. Um, and also, th this is an obvious one, but there's so many times that people are not clear on shipping, returns, exchanges. Uh, it's just simple. You should be, it should be absolutely part of your communication. Um, and it, it frustrates me when it's, when it's not. And then from a communication standpoint, uh, automation. Uh, and look, revenue generating automations, they work. If you've got a Magento site, because of the openness of the code, uh, we, can, we can leverage so much data straight out the box and immediately as well. Um, so have those revenue generating uh, automations activated on brand and optimized for that event. For example, uh, Chinese New Year or the lead up to Black Friday, et cetera, uh, an abandoned browse that follows up a week later two weeks later, pointless. And we see that quite a lot with, with opportunities and, and clients. So make sure um, your automations are uh, optimized, but also no generic automations. Um, things like following up people based upon abandoned cart or abandoned browse. Uh, don't treat everyone the same. So I see this time and time again with abandoned cart. It, it is the highest revenue generating program or automation out there, flat, it's fact. You can look at all the stats, it's fact checked if you like. Um, but from a, generator, a generic automations point of view, you can even pull that higher. Um, for example, I might be a champion customer for you. So why give me the same abandoned cart tone, copy, et cetera, than Bob who has never bought anything inside your store before. Maybe tempt them with an off your next purchase, you'll get 10% off if you purchase in the build up to, to uh, Black Friday. Review and tweak your automation timings to maximize the peak. So I'm talking about uh, if you've got things like wishlist nurturing, for example, uh, a classic one, wishlist nurturing, if you have enabled in Magento, you can suck up the wishlist data straight into, for example, .digital. And then you can nurture those wishlists. Now, wish lists usually are five to six days. We start nurturing. But in this case, it's, it's a single event that you're dealing with. So maximize the return on wishlist nurturing um, with dealing with the timings accordingly. And let your automations be aware of others. Let's be honest, uh, we've, we've all done it. We've maybe purchased some a classic example. I purchased a trampoline for my, for my children three weeks ago, four weeks ago. I'm still being targeted on abandoned browse. I'm still being targeted on SMS. I'm still being targeted around the internet on, on Google, et cetera. And with the same trampoline I've bought and it's now 20% off. Go figure. So the brand itself has gone massively down in our estimation. So be, make sure they're aware of each other. And that in itself is a huge revenue generator. Uh, and if you automate these correctly, and for example, I dot digital out the box, it's, it, they just work and they should just be moving along. Now, 
riding the peak wave longer and, and I, what, what are the post event ideas? What, what can you deal with to, to keep momentum, keep engagement, keep um, the revenue generating past these big events? You might only focus on being a, a merchant in a specific sector, in a specific area on a region, one or two events. So you need to keep those going throughout. Uh, so for me, it's not rocket science. Uh, don't hammer home Facebook custom audiences, Insta custom audiences, Google ad custom audiences. Don't hammer home and hound me around the net. Uh, people are getting aware across all regions. People are getting aware of that, getting fatigued. Um, the, the best examples of riding the peak for me is creating your own relevant personalized after party. Uh, for example, an electrical retailer, I purchased a TV last Black Friday, uh, it got sent through, all good. We, they had a post-purchase, they had a, a post-Black Friday um, television um, binge event, I think it was, and they were giving me recommendations on Netflix and the local channels, etc. And in there, it had options, obviously, up, upsell, cross-sell, product recommendations, but it was a nice personalized almost after party. You needed a login to get onto that certain area of the site as well. So it, it listens, listen to your behavior of your consumers and create that personalized after party. Ask your customers and subscribers, how did you do? Um, this is one, obviously people can send out surveys, reviews is a great way to, to gain trust for individuals. But ask your customer base and maybe your champions or your loyal, create that as a a post-purchase campaign almost, that how did we do? How was the experience, the site experience? How was the, 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 the communication post-event, et cetera? And you will get very candid feedback. You won't please everyone, but you will get very engaged users and your champions and loyals, those that you want to keep retaining, will actually give back and they feel like they're giving back. And for me, very simple landing pages, surveys, forms, et cetera, um, or part of digital funnel layer, uh, that, that sort of thing does work massively well. Um, automations that carry on, I'm not going to spend too much time because I've talked about this, but post-purchase, abandoned browse. Post-purchase is one of the most effective loyalty campaigns out there without the brash analytics. So I don't mean that hounding and retargeting me across every channel, across everything on the, on the net. Um, a, a really good one, for example, uh, we had a client where you, it was outdoor, um, so it was buying walking shoes and hiking boots. Uh, and the post Cyber Monday event was um, the walking club, the Cyber Monday walking club, for example. And depend upon your region, I would get local walking trails. And also, funnily enough, I had leather care products for my shoes, which obviously I, I then purchased. So for me, it's post-purchase. It is one of the most effective uh, campaigns out there. Um, now we're kind of getting near the, the end. I, I would say always use the channels your audience has chosen. Don't be limited. If you've got technology that limits you to one or two channels, for example, email only or SMS only, forget about it. You need to be in the channel that your audience is available on and wants to be talked to. Um, so if they request information via SMS or Facebook Messenger, uh, make sure that you, you do it, but also carry on the conversation. Um, communicate. Uh, if you've got stores, um, and obviously this is quite a sensitive time to be talking around this, but especially now, if there's variance, if you've got, maybe just not in, in your own region, but you've got stores externally in, in other regions, and if you've got physical stores, make sure you're highlighting the correct geographical information based upon your client, based upon your customer, uh, because it will hurt you. If, for example, maybe a region goes into lockdown, one other region doesn't, and you're starting to send information about, yeah, we're still open and so on and so forth, it hurts your brand. It's obvious, but it's, it hurts your brand. And obviously things like the COVID safe uh, policies, etc. cetera. Um, so I'm doing a lot of talking here, I understand that, but from a summary point of view, what should you do pre-peak wave? On your, on your Magento site, let's say. 
don't try and shout the loudest. Be relevant. So things like product recommendations is a simple thing that you should be doing uh, and is so massively revenue generating. It's very simple. You can drop product recs on your site um, via .digital or you can put it via content, etc. Warm up your actives and sound out your inactives. Make sure you maybe drop off some of your inactives. Warm up your actives by getting them engaged prior to the event rather than being part of the huge wave of communication that comes through. During the event, I cannot emphasize enough, communicate and read the current mood, but utilize all channels consistently. Don't suddenly spike sending a huge amount of SMS, or don't suddenly spike starting to hugely use Facebook Messenger um, or WhatsApp uh, with all of the compliance that goes around that. You need to be able to understand these channels and utilize them consistently. No generic automations, please. Um, for, for me, personal uh, personalized uh, communication it should be the same as uh, automations. Personalize those automations. Make sure the automations are talking to each other. Uh, and these, this is your huge marketing department in one. People say to me, I've only got one marketing person. Perfect. That's where a marketing tech comes in. We are your marketing department. And then post, be relevant in your follow-ups. It's, I can't emphasize, the, the, the nice little strategy of an after party with based upon not just the, we're extending the sale by 24 hours. Uh, people think, really, are you? Did it go that badly? What, uh, what's happening? Whereas if you go, hey, we're having a TV binge party because you bought a television. Oh, and by the way, here's a raft of upsells and cross-sells. And don't wait until the next party to send an invite. Don't wait until the next big event, be that regional or globally, uh, because again, it dips and goes, try and kind of flatten out the the curve, which is a bit topical, I suppose. But um, yeah, don't wait until the next party to, to send an invite. So listen, I just wanted to thank you uh, for your uh, attention uh, and the opportunity to, to talk. Um, usually I would dig in a lot more to the Magento side of things. I just wanted in this event, because we're gaining and getting close to the holiday season, the peak season, I just wanted to give some insight and successful and actionable strategies that, that can help um, and then absolutely open to talking deep tech uh, from a technology wise as i say we are premier partner in gentle we're in the core code uh, and you can just enable us immediately out the box so um, yeah thank you very much for your time that's great Murdo. Uh, let's give a couple of minutes from the audience see if there's any q q a coming in uh, Yes, and, absolutely. Uh, and in the meanwhile, I just want also to uh, tell the audience uh, Digital is our uh, platinum sponsor. So they also have a booth in, uh, in the exhibitor area. So make sure you guys check it out. And if you have any question about the solution, you can just go there. Uh, they also have a couple more session, one in the business area, I think it's going to start pretty soon. And another one, yep. I think, on the technic, uh, on the solution side, where uh, they're going to demo the solutions also as well. Yep, so just make absolutely. sure you guys check it out. <laughs> and I would definitely, thanks for that, I would definitely look at the um, the demoing <laughs> part because that itself, the platform, speaks uh -huh. for itself. Absolutely. So where, 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 where are you about in Australia, Murdo? Are you in so Sydney? I, I am in Sydney, yes. We've got two offices in, in uh, Australia. So we've got Melbourne and Sydney. And then we've got yeah. Singapore and, and other offices uh, across Southeast Asia. So currently at the moment, it is a beautiful day. So I am enjoying. We're coming, out of, <laughs> <laughs> we're coming out of a horrible winter. And now we're in spring. And, but I'm do, I, I miss my Singapore. I love Singapore. I love Southeast uh, yeah. Asia. And I've not been traveling since, since March now. So um, as soon as we are lifted and things improve, I will be I will be back across and helping the team um, who, are, who are over there. Yes, yes, that's all our prayers to missing all the traveling. <laughs> yeah, okay. absolutely, absolutely. Okay, doesn't seem like any question from the audience yet. I think I can let okay. you go, Murdo. Thank you so much for your time, and Excellent. I'll see you soon, around. Bye bye. Yeah, no problem. Thank you very much, sir. Cheers. Okay. Thank you.